In this video, I'm testing Antinsky high tough resin with four different tests. The hammer drop test, the hammer strike test, the vice test, and now also the rocket test. Plus, we'll look at how this resin works in service for the part that I'm using it for. These tests are based on my particular use case, but you'll get a good idea from these tests as to whether this Antinsky resin could work for you. And a quick disclosure, Antinsky did approach me to test this resin, and they sent it to me for free, but they've had no input into the video, and I'm not being paid to do this review. I've printed four of these parts, which I've designed to use with a track saw. The part has a wall thickness of three millimeters, and that might make you wonder how well the resin performs on thinner walled parts. And well, that's where the rocket test comes in, and there's more on that later. In the hammer drop test, I'm simply allowing this hammer to fall on the part with its own weight. The hammer weighs one and a half kilos, and the handle is 300 millimeters, or about a foot long. And you can see that the part withstands the impact really well. When you look at it carefully in slow motion, you can see that the part does deform slightly, but bounces back well under the impact. I usually take this test to uh, about 10 hammer drops before moving on to the hammer strike test, if the part makes it that far at all. But this resin showed so little damage that I stretched it out to uh, 15. And I also moved the part around quite a bit to come at it from all angles. Still good and quite impressive with only a few scuff marks. Then I tried the hammer strike test. This is where I apply a little bit more um, downward pressure. Well, I'm just bashing it basically. Now, even with this test, the part shows remarkable resistance to breakage. Notice in the slow motion footage that the workbench really is being pounded, but the part still takes the punishment. Now, on this fourth one, things changed. Okay, so I hit the part quite hard. And keep in mind, that was the 19th time that I'd hit this same part with this very large and kind of heavy hammer. So my scientific answer to that test is, well, the resin is pretty good. Now it's onto the vice test. Given the previous tests, I was expecting this to go well. And well, it did. Although the first test was a little surprising. It cracked when it was almost flattened, but then it also failed suddenly, breaking into many pieces. So I tried that test again. This time the part was compressed the same way and it also cracked the same way as expected, but it didn't fail suddenly. When I pulled it out of the vise, the resin still had some flex to it, uh, almost like a workable kind of feel. Now, what about thinner walls? Well, that's where the rocket test comes in. This water powered rocket has a wall thickness of one millimeter on the, uh, the main body and also on the tail fins. And you can see that it flexes quite nicely uh, with no signs of cracking or stress. Now, I was tempted to just um, bash this with a hammer as well, but a flight test is more realistic for the intended purpose. Uh, it's not a model, it actually flies. I'm launching this little rocket so that it lands on the concrete. And you can see here that it reaches a good height. I can't really say for sure, but I think about eight to 10 meters is about right. And it survived that test with no damage at all. No breakage, that hit the ground pretty hard. Pretty happy with that one. Still completely intact. So if you're thinking about using this resin for things like tabletop gaming, well, I'd say it's gonna work quite well. So I tried the test again, and this time it didn't fly quite as high, uh, but it came down nose heavy with a big bounce. And again, no breakage or signs of fracture. Now look, to get any kind of breakage, I filled up the whole body with water to make it heavy, and then I just dropped it, letting it fall on the fins. All right, okay, so we've got a breakage. And that's where I saw the first signs of breakage. Even then, it just broke off a small corner. Now, based on these tests, I can certainly confirm that you can use this Antinsky resin to make functional parts. Yeah, it's that good. But what about print accuracy? I get a lot of questions from viewers about accuracy on these tough resins. Well, in my case, the part needs to fit into this space on the back of this saw. This is where the dust is extracted. I've designed nine holes to fit over the three lugs located in this space so that the part can be fitted in various alignments. And for this to work without excessive play, the resin needs to print within about 0.1 millimeters accuracy. 
Now, I know that because in prototyping, just 0.1 millimeters would be the difference between too much play and way too tight. Now, for a tough, flexible resin, that's pretty good. Now, you can see here that the part fits nicely, not too tight and not too loose. But the next question relates to the finish of the resin. I've noticed with that some resins like Anycubic Tough Resin Ultra, where is it? It's uh, this one here, that the, um, the finish is so smooth that the rubber on the end of the hose doesn't grab quite as well. Now, I designed this fitting to be a push fit so that you can easily fit the hose and then remove it without any bayonet type of design. The hose therefore needs to stay in place without being pulled out too easily. But if there's enough tension, you do actually want it to disconnect, usually because you're overreaching or there's some kind of a snag. And you can see here that the fit is snug and holds well. There's plenty of grab, but uh, the saw will disconnect if you try hard enough. And if there's that much tension on the extraction hose, well, you probably want to stop and see what's causing the problem anyway. So there you have it, Antinsky High Tough Resin. A tough resin with a good amount of flex, a smooth print finish, and good accuracy. And just enough texture to interface nicely with a rubber hose. But how does it compare with other resins? See, without a comparison, it's hard to tell if this is going to be right for you. Well, if I compare it to the Anycubic resins, which I use a lot of, it sits right in the middle of their Tough Resins. Let's have a look. So there's Tough Resin Original, Tough Resin 2, and Tough Resin Ultra. Now, it looks like Anycubic is actually retiring their first generation of Tough Resin uh, in favor of Tough Resin 2.0 and Tough Resin Ultra. I actually found that the Anycubic Tough 2.0 was more brittle in my testing, and if it was up to me, I would have preferred something that was more similar to this um, Antinsky resin. So if I can just place that one in front there, that's probably the, uh, the combination that I would have liked to see. I'm not saying that the Anycubic resin is a bad resin, it's just that in my particular application, I did like the fact that this one here responded to the drop tests much better. Something I would like to see a bit more of from Antinsky is more technical information on their website about the resin's properties or exposure setting guidelines. I used the Anycubic RERF test for my D2 DLP printer, and the exposure time came out to two and a half seconds, which, by the way, seems to be the same time for just about any resin I put on the D2, but that's another discussion. So, should you buy it? Well, if your application is for functional parts that need to work under stress or impacts, then I'd say, yes, I would definitely say that this resin is worth a try. I'm really pleasantly surprised by its performance, and it opens up my eyes again to just how quickly this industry is developing. I've used a fair few resins, but until now, I'd never heard of Antinsky. So if you're just hearing about Antinsky for the first time in this video, well, as they say, you heard it here first. In fact, I like the performance of this Antinsky resin so much, that I'm going to leave this last remaining part that didn't get broken in the tests in my saw. Yeah, I like it. Or at least until something else comes along. One comment I would make is that more color choices would be good. If you're after high detail, then this resin will print it. But the thing is, it's so white that it's actually hard to see the detail. A nice gray color would be good. Or maybe something just a bit more creative than gray. Anyway. There are links in the description for more information on this resin and how to buy it, and that includes a discount code for purchases made with those links. And I'd like to say thanks to viewers who've used those links in the past, there's no extra cost to you, but Antinsky does offer me a small commission whenever you use the link, and that really helps to keep me testing new resins. Like this one. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.